So welcome everybody, thank you for coming. <coughs> uh, first things first, fire safety. Uh, we're not having planning to have an alarm go off, so if one does, please, there's an exit there, or we can go up through the building here. And, um, ah, sorry. Do we need some more chairs? <coughs> Do we need some more chairs? So, um, so firstly, I'm pleased to see that um, there's now a, a draft budget that we can look at. Um, it, it was only published online today, so I've, I've not had time to, to scrutinise the budget yet. Um, but I do hope that this budget now gonna, is going to be available for public consultation and um, scrutiny before it's ratified. Um, hopefully it will be put somewhere in a, in a quite a prominent position within the website so that the public can find it. It's not the easiest of documents to find at the moment. Um, my only comment at this point, and, and so this isn't, don't take this criticism, I can see the, the preset has gone up, it's now gone up 15, around 15%, which is, it's, I'm, I'm not saying that that's right or wrong, we need to understand the, the logic behind that figure. It's certainly the largest increase Certainly since 2014, when it went up 30,000, um, certainly over recent years, the maximum it's gone up by is about 22,000. So 67,000 is a huge jump. So it's important to understand the, what's behind that figure, what's driving that figure, and also, is that the new trajectory for the five-year plan? Because it's nowhere near the trajectory of the old five-year plan, which was only a few months ago. So. It would be interesting to have those clarifications on the budgets. Um, there's also, I see there's some notes about the, um, the possible addition of a second warden. Um, we have a wonderful town warden, Dave. He does, we all, he does an amazing job. Um, my only concern is by adding a second warden, does that mean that we're overstretching our resources by adding all these, you know, the, 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 these different facilities that require constant maintenance? Um, so again, that's something that I'm sure that the public would have concern about in the, when they review the, bud, the, the, the draft budgets. Um, I guess my main concern at the moment is, is obviously the subject of resignations. Um, we've, I see we've lost Christian, um, which I think is a sad loss. I think Christian, I always felt, added quite a lot to these meetings. He had a very inquisitive um, mind. Um, so I'm sorry to see Christian go, and I see uh, you also at the end of this meeting are going to be discussing the resignation of our town clerk. Um, 
that does concern me also. I think that, um, in my opinion, you've got a, you've got a fantastic town park. Who, let's be honest, um, I don't, i not, I don't necessarily always agree with the decisions taken by this council. Um, but I have to say that you're a town clerk that has a track record, a proven track record of achieving every objective she's been given to do. Whether you've asked her to create a town park, whether it's um, well over walk, whether it's regeneration of a town hall, um, or smaller issues. Um, so I think you're very lucky to have um, a town clerk of that calibre. And so it concerns me that someone that's pretty much the backbone of this town council has resigned and I'm hoping that when you get to the end of this meeting and you're going to be reviewing that resignation, that you're not just going to be accepting the resignation, I would hope that you'll be fighting to, to try and retain her, um, because I think she's a, a real asset <coughs> to this town council. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sean. Anyone else? No member? Okay then, right. Thank you very much. We'll move on then to item 1A to apologies for absence. But I don't think we have any. No, <laughs> no we're all here. Right, and then, uh, yeah, my announcements. <laughs> well, there's nowhere near as much for the month of December as there has been for previous months. It did quieten down a little. Um, I was going to tell you about Christian's resignation, but we've already been told about it. And um, so uh, he's no longer with us. So, right. Um, Things that uh, I was invited to as the mayor. Um, we, I expect a lot of you know, we do have a community band in, in the town. And it's a, it's a band that encourages anyone of any ages. You don't have to be a child or a, or a retired person. But if you want to learn to play an instrument, you go along and they teach you and then you play in their band. It's great, actually. And they had a concert. It was at Chilcompton Village Hall, um, but it was, Absolutely wonderful. We had a great time there. Um, yeah, on the tenth, we went. Uh, yeah, I went along to Santa's Grotto. I saw Santa giving presents to the children, which was quite funny. Especially one or two of the children who got very shy about going to into Grant, uh, Santa's Grotto, <laughs> and they wouldn't. And Santa came out on all fours, crawling across the floor, getting them to laugh. It was wonderful. <laughs> Really funny. <laughs> so we also had, of course, on the 16th, the Senior Citizens Christmas Party. And do you know what? The number of people, I can't tell you how many people were there. Alex would be able to tell you that, the number. But how many? 80. 80. 80. And I reckon that 75, if not 80, people, as they left, said thank you and what an amazing job the council have done. Now they, you know, as far as they're concerned, it's the council that does it. And I appreciate there's all the other people coming into this, but it was just amazing. That was the attitude, and it was so worth knowing. In a way, I wish I could have recorded, or I could have recorded it all. <laughs> um, and then on the 20th, uh, Richard Bird just invited me to go along and um, have a chat with him on the radio. Another grotto. <laughs> but you didn't have a beard. Not, not a fluffy one. And um, yeah, we had a lovely chat about all the things that had gone on with the council the previous year <coughs> and uh, where we were looking to go for the future, which is the sort of thing that we talk about most times when I'm there. So it was great. And, um, and as it was a bit in advance, I was able to actually listen to it a couple of days later, <laughs> which is a bit embarrassing. It always is when you when you have to listen to your own voice. <coughs> so that's really the mayor's announcements. So thank you for that. Okay, on to the town clerk's report. Hope you've all had a chance to read it through. And uh, is there anything you want? To no, just um, highlight obviously the new bin that was installed already it's been set fire to and burnt down which is very frustrating um and just a reminder of the wellerbrook walk that is booked for wednesday yeah at two o'clock yeah brilliant but if anyone's got any questions um in regards to that 
report that you've had? Anyone? No? Okay. <coughs> I did like your comments about Steve. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I think, I think that is, <coughs> what you've done is fantastic, Steve. I really do. Right then. Declarations of interest, item 185. Any from anyone? No? Okie doke. So, 186, exclusion of the press and public. We do have an item 200. So, everyone happy with that? Yeah. 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 Okie doke. 187, the, uh, confirm the minutes of the last meeting. <coughs> Anyone got any queries? <laughs> yeah. Proposed. Proposed, Steve, Richard, second. Shall I sign these now? Yeah. to receive verbal reports from the Town Council Standing Committees. So over to you, Gordon, for planning. Uh, over to you, Pete, because uh, I missed it, unfortunately. I'll do a bit of a <laughs> uh, <laughs> ah, Sorry, you caught me there in the middle of the road. Uh, <coughs> uh, wait, wait, wait. I don't I think there are any controversial uh, notification. No. Mm. no. no. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Does the meeting have to go ahead? Yep. Yes, the meeting did go ahead. Yes. Right, okay then. Um, yeah, reports from councillors attending meetings of outside boys. Well, I did say it's the rule of transport to a uh, controlled slowdown now up there, so they will be actually disbanding by the end of this year. All oh, right. Okay. They seem to resolve and got as far as they can go. Um, that was allowed to come. I spoke to David Wong. Right. Anyone else attend? There was a community trust meeting on the 6th of December, yes. which a few of us were at. Mm -hmm. uh, I have, I did ask Alex to write down a, a summary of the meeting. Yes. And um, I circulated it to everyone. You did? But I've just realised that that's not good to people that obviously I didn't circulate it to. But it'd be rather excruciating for me to read the entire thing out, other than the trust has got lots of things to do. So shall we just publish it in due course, Don? Or would you like me to read out what Alex sent up to me? Yeah, we can put a link to it. If he's yeah. going to publish it on the website, we can put a link Yeah, well, we can do this in a circuit, yeah. but rather than yeah. read it out now. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Brilliant. Okay, then. Mm. Right, then, so on to item 190, accounts for payment. Purchases over two hundred and fifty pounds. Anyone have any comments for this? <coughs> no. Yeah. So, would someone like to propose acceptance, Brian? Thank you. Steve seconding. Right. And then items under 250. Any queries on this? No? Would someone like to propose exceptions? Brett Martin and Mike Michael second. <coughs> Item 191, monthly reports for December. <coughs> yes, Brian. Um, I was just going to say I have uh, email demand about the horticultural uh, expenses because they're all been quite a long way over budget the right. last year. Um, so she was going to have a look 
Obviously, it's not enough time yet to run the emails or earlier on. But, um, <laughs> yeah. Have a look at the costs there. But um, they do seem to. Some some years we've gone under on one part of the contract and over on others, there's some value staff, but this year we seem to be over on all of them, so I'm not sure. Okay. Uh, and maybe things that have been posted to run at the moment. Mm -hmm. Is that the total volume? Is that the um, river and. Yeah, the. Um, um, it's, the, it's the contract one, so it's the um, grounds. Uh, grass, hedges, trees, the horticultural labour and the horticultural supplies of all over. I know sometimes there's difficulty mm. in sorting out which is quite which budget I think, but um, <coughs> they're all they're all over at the moment. Right. Any other queries? Mm. No. So you'll be proposed and seconded them anyway. Okay. Right then, that's fine. We'll move on to item 192 and uh, re report on the town hall. <laughs> and so I'll suspend standing orders for Nicola to um, give us some information, please. Thank you. Um, I'll just open the report up. So work on the town hall continues. Um, the contractor is now mainly focusing on the demolition of the spine wall, having got the propping in place just before Christmas. Um, as you can imagine, it's sort of a bit Jenga-like in as much as you can't start taking that wall down unless you have absolute confidence that it's structurally secure yeah. and that you can do so. So <coughs> we'll work over the next few weeks focused on taking down that spine wall and then doing the excavation as well of the ground floor slab in order to achieve that level surface throughout, which is so important to the overall accessibility of the scheme. Um, as part of that, um, there'll be, I think the estimate is about three skips a day worth okay. of builder's rubble coming out. So it's coming up to a really intensive period in terms of the clearing out. Um, also, probably the most potentially interesting point of the archaeological watching brief, as well as the ground slab is cleared, we do need the archaeologist present to, to oversee that excavation. Um, not all areas, but particularly the uh, side closest the island, which is the one identified as perhaps having potential. So we'll see if anything is uncovered during that process over the next few weeks. And the third formal site progress meeting took place on Wednesday the 14th. Um, so in terms of the programme, um, there have been some sort of curveballs over the during the course of the opening up works. Partly was the poor condition of the timber wall plate mm. and the, the, the impacts of damp over in the far corner. Um, we've now done some opening up work in TSB Alley, which has given a better idea of what's happening underground. Um, and there's some, some quite badly damaged drainage there, which is another um, reason why that area has been so wet and why the walls have been saturated. But having uncovered that, obviously, that will be addressed as part of the scheme so that you don't have that ongoing problem on a newly completed building that you're then facing the same damp issues again. Um, so at the moment, um, we're anticipating a delay on the overall completion date of 17th of May. We don't know how long that is at the moment because we're still working to mitigate it. There's been a, a meeting on site with the steelwork fabricators who have already come up with a way of saving a few weeks, so it's looking optimistic. But obviously, as soon as we've got a revised programme and we've got more confidence about if and what any delay is, then we'll be looking to, to mitigate that and manage that. One of the best things about the propping being in place is it means that the assembly room will be usable again in a few weeks um, because Although the spine wall will be taken out, obviously it's the propping now that's taking the weight. The spine wall isn't carrying anything 
anymore for the first time in a very, very long time. Um, in terms of phase two, um, the architect and project manager and quantity surveyor appointments obviously have been made. We're looking to get the mechanical, electrical and structural engineers appointed via competitive quotes in the very near future so that those parts, key parts of the development of phase two are addressed as well. In terms of finance, um, phase one is still forecast to come in at the costs indicated. We've still got, notwithstanding the additional costs that have come up to date, for example, additional surveys in, in TSB Alley to work out the source of the damp issue, um, we still have a, 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 a good buffer of contingency left as well to address anything else that might come up during the remainder of the project. Um, hopefully, as we've now uncovered so much of the building and stripped back, one hopes that we've probably uncovered what we might discover, but you know, notwithstanding that, we still want to retain that contingency because you know, we've got another few months to go and we want to feel really confident once we're out of the ground and once we've exposed all of the structure, that's when we can have more confidence that there's nothing lurking there, essentially. And then in terms of the variations to date, um, been a few surveys, a few additional changes, but nothing substantial as of now. Um, though clearly, as and when contingency requests come up, um, they're always directed via the, the town clerk for approval. We've got our weekly site progress meeting next week, next Wednesday, um, when we'll be hearing more from the site manager as to progress. Um, and thereafter the client project progress meeting where we update the town trust and town clerk as well regarding progress. So that is a summary of the, of the report submitted. Thank you very much. Any questions? Can I, can I just ask you about the um, French train that's all been made by TSB? Because you said you can you, you render that the event waterproof cement. So I think based on what we now, because having had those open With door the works done in the alley, yeah. it's it, because before we did that, and this is why those kind of intrusive yeah. works are really good, because before that it was sort of, well, I think that the ground's a bit higher, that could be part yeah, yeah, of it, yeah. and it's had a cement render, that could be part of it. So it's sort of, but now we've exposed it, I think the answer is probably a bit clearer in yeah. as much as, yes, it is because the ground was higher, yeah. So it was definitely that issue. The fact that we've hacked off the, the impermeable cement render from the uh, inside will help drive yeah. that out. But actually to see, literally to open it up and see there is a drainage problem because these drains aren't yeah, functioning yeah. as well. Is that, that's kind of the part of the... It, still needs, it, it still needs a way of taking the water away from that wall. And if you're putting a French drain, what I'm concerned about is if you don't put an eco drain in, mm. you're going to get resilting of that. Gravel. Yes, and I think this is why we, we need the structural engineer to come and take a look and come up with some recommendations yeah. because you're quite right, there's no point doing all of this only to have a solution that it doesn't in fact yeah. solve anything. Well, it's running water down there, you're taking gravel from everywhere else, it's going to resilt. Exactly, and I think I think it's also, obviously there's a surface water issue which is part of it, but the fact yeah. that now we know actually the drains haven't been functioning, I think yeah. one of them is quite badly, badly. damaged. Yeah. So it's it's sort of there are multiple issues and it's coming up with a solution yeah. that addresses all of those rather yeah. than just trying to deal with a symptom yeah. or yeah. you know at, at which point someone would just be sitting here in in another few years going well there's still Silver damp down. on the wall so what yeah. was the point of that again. <laughs> so I mean literally the, the that uh, intrusive survey has only just happened so the next step for yeah. the for the team is to reflect on all those findings yeah. and, and work out the most effective, cost effective as well as it still needs, I still think it needs to drain down there to take that surface water directly away as opposed to hit the wall and then run down. I think, it, I, I think you're probably, as a, as a non uh, civil engineer, I think you're probably yeah, right. Contract manager. Oh, brilliant. <laughs> I, well, that I, I have uh, copies of you being right as well. But no, I think, I think you're right. It's, it, there's a few problems to it, and it's yeah, the surface yeah. water is a really good part of that. Because it will come back well. if you don't solve it. 
Yeah, at which point all of our good work in taking that uh, uh, impermeable cement off will yeah. soon be compromised if that solves it going out that way, but it doesn't solve it yeah. coming yeah. behind it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, pretty good. Uh, Steve? So is the work on schedule or behind? Or At the moment, we believe there is going to be a delay. So the contract completion date is the 17th of May, mm -hmm. and we think there is going to be a delay. However, um, obviously what we do is not go, oh, there's a delay. You know, the point is we all get together and try and work out and mitigate or reduce the delay and see if there's anything we can do with the programme or bringing work forward or doing it a bit intelligently. <coughs> And at the moment, there was a meeting on site today, which is the architect and the structural engineer and the um, steels uh, fabricator company. Um, and I think they've already come up with a way of mitigating at least some of that delay. So based on that, the contractor is going to have another look at the programme and then give us something for review next Wednesday at the site progress meeting. So we can see what the, the bottom line is. because. Obviously, there's so many threads, you might have one thing pulling it out, and actually other things could pull out. Yeah. <laughs> um, always the aim is to mitigate or offset delays, not just to agree them. Okay. It's, it's to try and work such that they can be absorbed. Um, but at the moment, I, I think it, it is likely there will be some delay. What our job is to minimise that delay as much as possible. What program are you using? Node or graph? So I use, in terms of um, managing the overall project program, I use Microsoft Project. Yeah. But then um, the contractor uses to me what looks like a kind of um, a, it's Excel yeah. based, rather more elaborate. One of the one of the colleagues did a module, a Node, which was developed from the nuclear submarines, where they're completely in different companies. If that's slowing down, you can put in it, move this one off. That was another program. And then you've got the standard graph. I think because the number of, I've, 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 oddly enough, we have, um, my, me and my colleague each have a project which has an ex nuclear industry project manager on it, actually volunteering. I guess we brought in the construction as, uh, because it can pull other items in. If you're slowing down there, can we pull this one in and put that one forward and then catch that one up? Yeah, That's how that works. and I think so. Project has some of that functionality as well. Right. But I think the main thing is with with A and G with your contractor who's working on the town hall. Um, there aren't too many subcontractors, which is good. So yeah. it's not so it, the the relationships are very very direct. Yeah. For example, um, having the steel uh, supplier on site today, it's easy to go directly and bring them in yeah, and then yeah. do that kind of thing collaboratively, yeah. collaboratively on site because I mean there are there are subcontractors you know for example mechanical and electrical etc so there are subcontractors but there's not an enormous amount mm -hmm. it, it's not complex from that yeah, point yeah, of view yeah, yeah. so which is good because it then means if you're looking at ways of getting um, say uh, an electrical subcontractor point of view you can go directly to them and say Come on site and yeah, we yeah. have a look at what we're going to do. With the steel, they came in, they found a solution. That's the principle of the memory, anyway. Ah, right. So maybe we're doing it when we do yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay, then. Does anyone else have any questions? No? Right, then. Thank you very much for uh, coming along with that. And uh, we'll see you soon. So I'll. Uh, Reinstate standing orders and we'll go on to item 193. The White City football pitch. So, um, <laughs> cheers, guys. Cheers. Right. Yes, Brian. Um, on the White City, I was very pleased that, to see that the football club were. Happy to pay the yeah. rent. What I wasn't sure of was whether the proposal was for um, it's North Town Council to take on the sublet from Thames and then sublet it again to the football club, or whether the football club were now going to deal direct with Thames, which would seem to be the more sensible thing Ooh. now. Yeah, right. Because it doesn't seem any point in us getting involved if they can deal direct with. Wouldn't it, wouldn't it mention at the meeting?
information regarding that, that they would take it on, we'd help them in, initially, and then they would do maintenance on it themselves, I think. We, that was a discussion, I think, yes. Yeah. Yeah. But if they, I mean, uh, right, you, you all haven't had your say yet, but my view just happens to be if they're prepared to take it on, mm -hmm. then that takes it out of our problem, doesn't, yeah. doesn't become a problem for Dave or anyone there. But um, yeah. please, everybody have their I, say. I think they were having trouble negotiating the veins, so I think that was. I was going to say, I don't think that they, was, couldn't, they couldn't lease it to the, the football club, could they? And that was why it oh, was right. come to the tank. Is that right? Yeah. Oh, I think that was the original discussions, yeah. yeah. Yes, Steve? Yeah, but we're not taking over the lease, are we? It was to, I think they want to sublease it to us from Baines. Or from the Dutch. <coughs> yeah. I, I think if the football club could do it direct, with our, you know, having now negotiated this, this figure, I think that would be much better. I think, yeah, yeah, with all the problems we've had with taking on so many things, yes. it's something we don't really want to be taking that on as a liability. Could, could it be then that we ask if that can happen? Could we go to, whether it's Baines or the Dutchy, and say, would you be prepared to deal direct with the football club? I had a feeling in the original discussion we had that the Dutchie wouldn't negotiate with the football club. They wanted to do it with either Baines or Town Council. Mm, yeah, that's what I think yeah, happened. That's why we was asked. Mm. They approached us in the first place. Yeah. I know that they're going to pay it, but ultimately, if we take the lease, I'll know we're going to be responsible for it. Mm. Yes. Which is a problem as far as I'm concerned. Yes. How long has the lease or something? But was it Baines who approached us or the Dutchie? It was the football club that approached us and said that they couldn't, would we help them? We are going back quite some time now. They approached us and said, could we help them because they couldn't take the lease on? But we, the town council, could take the lease on and then they would rent it off of us. I'm all for helping them out, but. And can I ask, mm -hmm. uh, how long is the agreement likely to be from? Mm -hmm. Mm, I don't know off the top of my head. Is it like, is it like, like to change how many years? So how many, I'd have to find out how right, many okay. years mm. is left on the lease. Right, okay. Thank you. Excellent. <clears throat> well, I think it's a splendid idea, and um, I think we should support it, even if there is a small risk to the council. And hopefully, any risk would be mitigated by making a success of the, the football people there, and we should do it, and we can support them. Sorry, but, but this is again. Bain's not wanting to have this responsibility. Yeah. I agree with Gordon, I'm, I'm all for helping football club yeah. out, but um, it is, you know, we could land back on our lap again. But, you know. mm. so the worst case scenario would be like, we'd have to pick up half of the rent. Is that right? Yes, yes. Yeah, six, six fifty. Well, six hundred and fifty. Yeah, mm. we could have some yeah. events there ourselves if we fit our No, seriously, I think um, I think I think we should support this. Mm. Richard, should we have a conversation with the football club to identify their attitude to maintenance costs and the like? Yeah. Is that prepared to pay? The equivalent of the rent, six hundred and fifty. Can they also then um, give us some kind of indication of how much they can get involved with the looking after the maintenance? Yeah. They did. They, they, they said they would look after yeah, the maintenance. They said they totally. They, they said they totally maintain it. Again, that's a, a risk in our part. Mm -hmm. They then didn't. But well, we're reminded of that. Because it's, it's a risk that Bain should be taking on. They're, they're, mm -hmm. Council with the resources. This is an example of why we're in problems uh, potentially with our budget. Yeah. Mm. We haven't tried getting back to Spain. We've been going back because I'm forced to. That's how we've taken so long to get to this point, and yeah. we've now got to this. All the parts in the um, ground over here. Mm, yeah, <coughs> so it's a make or break situation. Well, really? we can go back to him and ask him <coughs> some other costs. <laughs> But originally, how many 
April 22. This is when it was went back to, so. The sum seems relatively small and the risk seems even smaller, so. Is the rent review outstanding, so mm. the rent could be raised. Possibly. Yeah, I mean that <coughs> might be an issue but because the football club are obviously prepared to pay you know, what they are at the limit, but I mean if it went up significantly um, mm. under a rent review, then that might change the football club's position. Mm. Mm. Um, I think you should have, before making a final decision, I think you should have some more information how long the lease is going to be and yeah. what the yeah, I think that you need to consider as well there'll be some legal costs because um, <coughs> heads of terms, who's going to fit the bill for the heads of terms and we'll be ready. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so is that the path we're going down? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I think most we're supportive of it, but I think we need to get a bit more information first. Okay. All right, is that sufficient? Mm -hmm. So there's four points: legal costs, maintenance costs, find uh, how long the lease is, how long is left on the lease, and why can't the football club lease directly? Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. Okay then. Should we say on that? <laughs> right. On to item one nine four, the planning committee. It's just really to note the update from the planning committee the resignation of Councillor Brad Lawrence from the Planning Committee to consider appointing another member. And we do understand why Brian's pulling out of planning, yes. <laughs> it's a long way from Cainshaw, isn't it? <laughs> Jack, I, I, as I said at the Planning Committee meeting, can, I, can we place on record our, our grateful thanks to Brian, who's been an absolutely stalwart member of the Planning Committee mm -hmm. and the main person dealing for a number of years with the the neighbourhood Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Thank you very much for that, Brian. We do appreciate it. So is there somebody who would like to uh, step into uh, Brian's place? <laughs> How many people does that leave on the planning committee? Enough, I think. Yeah. <laughs> Smaller, so di smaller dynamic is good. You can always come back, you know, and see, and talk to people anyway. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, then, right. So, no replacement, you're going to leave it not at the May, yeah? Yeah, not this. <laughs> okay, so item 195 now, which is the publication of full council recordings. And uh, for us to consider authorising the publication of recordings of a full council meeting. So, you've seen the request from Councillor Michael Evans. Just to add on to that, I did put some items to consider with the agenda request onto the paper, just things to, for you to think about. Mm. Do the BI equipment? That's an item to consider, equipment, so obviously on the, the paper there was no cost to the council, you know, what equipment to be used making the recordings, I understand that at the moment obviously Gordon's doing it, if in May Gordon wasn't here, who would be doing it then, what equipment would be used, who's responsible for it, um, about noting what was discussed earlier about delegation to individual councillors, the time required to edit and upload content, the cost of equipment if you was having to purchase it yourselves, and also deciding whether the meetings are going to be live streamed or if you're just going to upload them after with a recording. That's items for you to consider. Can I come in on a few things there? Mm. Is that all right, Mike? Uh, so the first is um, live recordings, I think, are probably a kind of non-starter. Danes get to do live recordings because they have people manning the cameras, but uh, we can't got that, so you don't, want to, you don't want to go live. Sorry, they also have a delay. Do that, right, okay. <laughs> but yeah, but I think we don't want to go live in a hurry. Um, so put that to one side. I, another thing I would say is I think our existing policy is probably adequate. So you've got the situation at the moment where I am acting effectively as a volunteer and doing it voluntarily, and that's, that's kind of great. And, and all these 
find people who are visiting us today could do the same and we've got the people in press that could do the same and so they can record the video and upload it according to our rules just as I can and it kind of doesn't cost us anything so I think if we were to go and formalise it we're kind of creating a lot of work for ourselves and um, that, that's not really necessary and if nobody records it I don't know who they would complain to because they've got the right to record it themselves. Mm -hmm. So I think within our existing policy, we're probably okay. That's fine. <coughs> Thank you. I think we could return to these uh, thorny problems uh, if Gordon isn't doing. But since we've got Gordon and his equipment, they don't arise until that happens. Mm -hmm. Right. Is everybody happy with that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yes. We need to make sure Gordon is happy using his own equipment. That's no. <laughs> no I would let him know he's actually more work than you'd think because these sort of two or three hour videos are quite problematic to deal with, but it's possible. One thing we should probably resolve is is it okay for me to publish it on the Town Council's YouTube channel? Or the Town Council's website, let's say. Remember, same thing. Well, I think if it needs to go, going to be published anywhere, that's the thing. I could send it direct to non it was published. Well, it depends what you agree, if you're going to agree to authorise it to be published. Well, it's all set, we all well, agree that it can be done, can it? Absolutely. Okay, that's fine, thank you. Thank you. Right. Has it been proposed and agreed then? Or yes, yes. Yeah. You need agreement. a proposal. Right. Right. Steve is yeah. proposing, Michael is seconding. I'll do it. <laughs> I hope the recording works. Right. Okay. Gordon's got to do it. Right. It might work. Sometimes these things don't work. So you can get your hope. <laughs> well, we'll keep our fingers crossed then. Right. So, on to item 196. Town Warden van. Just as an update to the Town Warden's van, I believe the van is no longer in existence. So there was a consideration to uh, pay for the repairs needed, yeah. but I believe as of today, the van is no longer here, so that's taken that option away. Well, that's what I was going to propose. Oh, yes, yeah. <laughs> I think we all want it, right? Yeah. Yes, Brian. Um, I um, am concerned, really, that we did agree to lease a van, um, but there doesn't seem to be any date when that's going to become available. And um, I would, I'm not in favour of paying um, sort of £1,300 a month um, open ended uh, until we get the lease van. I think it's an extortionate amount of money. I um, do too. The, the, the lease for a year is going to be about three three thousand or so plus. Um, and these proposals for a, uh, for hiring for a month, thirteen hundred pound a month. Mm. It's just the figures just, just, just don't compare. Um, so it, it's unfortunate we haven't got that uh, other option now, but um, I would I couldn't possibly approve thirteen hundred pound a month for that. <coughs> Michael. We do have a person concerned here. I wonder if uh, we could suspend Stanley Woods if he has anything to add. Yeah, do you want to yeah. suspend? Are you happy with that day? Sorry, say that. Are you happy to be brought in on the discussion? As yes, you it's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Right. We'll suspend Stanley Woods then, everybody? Yeah. Right. Just to point out, this in the paper it does say that it's not going to be available till probably just September, the van. Mm. And that's because it's a new van, and if anybody's bought a new car recently, the wait time for that. But really? There are lots of, I, mm. I did a quick Google, and there are a number of sites that say they have vans, lease vans immediately available. So I don't really know why we're having to wait so long no. for a van. But, um, you know, that that's nine months of paying £1,300. Mm. A month. So, what well, what information have you got, Dave, for us? Um, just what Amanda in the office has been looking at vans, and she said that was the earliest time she could secure one. So, um, in the meantime, the van uh, uh, failed its MOT disastrously. So, um, the cost of repairing it would have 
possibly gone into the thousand pounds for the council to put the money into my vehicle. Thousand pounds wouldn't be worth. <laughs> well, it seems to be cheaper than renting a van. Yeah, so yeah, you yeah. Uh, he probably would have, but the tax and the insurance fell on my shoulders because the amount I got from the council per month was fifty pound a month. Mm. So that equates to twelve pound fifty a week. So that was for fuel costs. So the burden of that van was coming on my shoulders. Mm. Okay. It's a shame. We would have been happy to change that, but anyway, it's scrap yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. <coughs> so, are we going to be looking into doing something about a van quicker? Well, perhaps if, if you looked it up on the some websites, perhaps you could give some to a man, then we could maybe yeah. look to get one quicker. I don't know whether we're how you know whether we're tied into this new lease for September um, because I propose if we're not, then we ought to re yeah. revisit it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I know that the contracting agreement was assigned, assigned at the time, so when that was agreed mm. at the council meeting. Well, I think, you know, I'm having to wait mm. over nine yes. months, because, I mean, that was several months ago now. Mm. Um, so, you know, waiting a year for a new van just seems ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Well, we're in state standing orders, and then thank yeah. you again. Um, so do we see if we can do something about it? So you, you want to look at the current, look at the contract, see if we can do anything about bringing it. I know that Amanda has asked if it can be brought forward and they said that they would try and. Um, but in the meantime, if that, that's not an option, what, what is it you want to do going forward? Well, one question would be, um, if they can't bring it forward, are we, are we, why are we liable to a contract if they can't live in the van? So <coughs> you can imagine um, if there's another lease available, yeah. we just go with another lease. Yeah. Yeah. Because we, we, yeah. we haven't, assuming we haven't paid anything out yet, we can't be committed. Mm -hmm. So um, I think the thing should be to go with another yeah. lease. Could you, um, as Gordon said, could you let them know in the office? Yeah, I have. I did send some links to Amanda earlier on. Thank you. So we've got, we've got to get wheels for the board. We need them quickly. <coughs> mm -hmm. I'm not even saying I'm not sure. Yeah, just yeah. we've set them already. Yeah. When we get anywhere. That's the yeah. only option. Yes, we've still got the cap. No, there's the caps on the van. Mm. This is mm. sort of yeah. to me. It'd be cheaper to buy one than it would be to lease to mm. rent it, wouldn't it? Yeah, buy one. And mm. if, if it costs you ten grand to buy. Mm. In nine months' time, it might be only worth six thousand, but it's still cheaper than this. Yeah. this. Mm. 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 That is daisy. Well, we should get something as soon as possible. Well, mm. with, with second hand as an option, and if it is yeah. so impossible to get new. Mm. If you buy from the dealer, you will get some sort of warranty, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Is a standard three months uh, applied to all dealers. Mm. <coughs> Go back to them within three months with a defect which was obviously there at the time of purchase. Well, um, I'm only thinking of probably spending not more than ten thousand pounds on a van. That was an English yeah, <laughs> Vans are quite expensive, <laughs> which is a good ones. But I've seen quite a lot on Facebook, so I'm sure it should be something about mm. the title for the time we want. Mm -hmm. But if, if you're yeah. continuing to wait for that one and you're just using it in the meantime, you don't want it for very long, do you? No, no. Mm -hmm. For six months. And you still start even if you get 50% back. Mm. Yeah. Right. So, something to look at. Go and see what so, go, go ahead to look at that mm -hmm. side of things. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, you want to look at the contract. Uh, are we able to liable for it? Could we cancel it if you wanted to and look elsewhere? Or what was the for purchasing a second hand van. Yeah. What are we doing in the meantime? Stop if we're stuck with a contract then we'd have to buy it. Buy it. It'd be cheaper to buy mm. a, a van and then sell it when we're ready, when we've got a decent <coughs> place for the other one. Yeah. So yeah. do you want to give authority to purchase a van or or do you want to come back to the next meeting next month? I'm sure do you need it. Because you'd be looking at another month's time on the quicker than that. I can get by in the meantime. I mean for how long roughly? 
Uh, another month. Month. No. You get okay. a month. As long as you're time, time. if not earlier. Yeah. So as long as that's fine then, so we can come back to the next council right. meeting. Yeah. Okay. As long as Dave's happy with that. Yeah. 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 Dave, what's the smallest van you would be able to work with? Um, you probably need some things like I have before Renault traffic or transit, that kind of size. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Medium wheelbase? Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, then, right. Okay, we're going to go ahead and yeah, that's fine. see what we can do. Yeah. Right ahead. So on to item 197, the annual meeting of the town. So, as you can see, because of the elections, um, it sort of changes the dates around a bit. Mm. So, um, and we're having the civic awards at the annual meeting, as we agree. So, consider the um, annual meeting on the 27th of May. That's going to be fun if it's an entirely new council. Yeah, that, that's your option. You either do it before you go, you get a new council, which yeah. would be around about the 13th of March, or you wait until afterwards where it's a new council and then do it that I'm way. sure so, I know two of us will still be here. Well, I would think there'd be someone from here. I just query the date. It says Monday the 27th of May. The 27th <coughs> say... of May is actually a Saturday. Yeah, so it means 29, it mentions the 27 twice. It means the 20. Do you mean? So are we doing it on a Saturday, or do we? Well, that's your choice as to when. Right. So it says doing. Monday the twenty seventh. Monday the thirteenth of March. Yeah. Or Saturday the twenty seventh of May. Yeah. It says we just say Monday. It'd be a nice day on the twenty seventh of May. Yeah. Sun will shine and everything. It's better to be a weekend since we've got the civic awards included. Yeah. 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 I, I I think that's a good idea. I do. Yeah. Yeah. All, all things considered. That was the reason it was put on Saturday, is because you're having the Civic Awards, so you could yeah. use it as an event sort of time. I think it's a good idea. Do we have to propose anything? Yeah, someone proposed that. I can propose it. Right, Gordon's proposed it. Pete's second. Okay, everybody happy with that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, after all, we can all turn up, even if we're not being re elected. All right. Okay, so uh, item 198, the play and gym inspections at the squares. So, who's got any comments? Just have to note, well, there's a lot of them there. Is that all to note? Or what? Yeah, yeah, there was nothing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There was nothing at my risk on there. <coughs> One thing I was fascinated about was where there was just, you know, some bolts missing or something. Are they de deliberately removed or do we know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's amazing what people do. Yeah. yeah. So it, it was just really for you all to. Uh, there was nothing made sort of there, was there? Yeah. yeah. Does anyone have any questions? No? Yeah. So, uh, <coughs> all happy to uh, leave this to be dealt yeah. with? Mm -hmm. Yeah. God, the amount of information is incredible, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, so on to item 199 then, the budget. Stock and Westfield for this to be shared? No, there's been discussions, there's been talks with Radstock Town Council who are keen to get uh, somebody in as well. So when we went out to for a 
apprentice town warden, we've struggled to get applicants. We had uh, one person come and done a mm. trial week. Um, and it was on the back of that, it's like we need to look at other ideas. So that was the other discussion. And with Radstock looking for somebody, we had a meeting with the town clerk there, and they said that's something that they would like to pursue. Um, and it could be a, you know, a shared. So you've got one there who's able to cover day, you know, so it could be that we might need him for five days or her for five days, one week if uh, Dave was on holiday or vice versa for them. So there's a continuation of cover, but ultimately they could just be split down the middle, two and a half days, two days, three days. So this budget yeah. item would be an enabler for that? Uh, yes. Yeah. That's, a, that's an assistant or not a um, trainee? No, that's good assistant. So that person could be a, a contractor. Right. You'd have, yeah, well, it wouldn't be an employee, it would be a contractor. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Any other comments or questions? I think Baines is looking for a 5% increase, as far as I understand it. Um, three percent of which would be the uh, either two or three percent of which would be for the social care and adults and children's social care. Okay. Um, so looking at it percentage wise, we've got this uh, kind of huge seeming figure which uh, Councillor Hughes referred to as a fifteen percent or um, that sort of area compared with what Baines is going to be hired to to do. So going for it. Um, which I think we should because the actual numbers of pounds and pence uh, don't reflect those percentages. Um, we're talking about, um, what is it, two pounds a week, mm. uh, something like that. Um, <clears throat> not nothing, because uh, it's every week, but uh, um, we need to be able to justify the increase and to be clear what it is that we're going to uh, present to the public as being the reason for this increase. Well, the increase, wasn't it, for the Sorry, assistant warden and the communications, because that was one thing that wasn't discussed. I know yeah. we talked about it at the event, <coughs> but we never went back to it, which is why we put it into here. Yeah. Is it 32 pence yeah. a, week a week increase? Yeah, so that justifies the 32 pence. Mm. And then as a rider, I, I just, you would want to say that we have to be clear that we, we can present reasons for the overall increase. Mm. Mm. I think my, my <coughs> preference following all the discussion we had of taking money out, putting money back in, really justifying quite strongly why we felt um, we should put the preset where it was, is to go for the, the lower one. So to, to, to try and find some other way, if we can, of filling the um, the assistant warden position and not paying for it. I think we just, you know, I think we can justify, we put we, the, the amount of money we'd spend on, you know, putting events and, and contributing to the community. Um, it is more money that's going towards the ground works aspect of things, which are, we sort of felt was quite high and quite a, a significant proportion of the town council spending. So that, and then the communication thing to, that's come later. Um, I, my preference is to leave those two things up and go for the, the one that's nearer to the 11%. Can I say, I think that the original proposal was a little bit on the high side, but um, back to what I think a few people have said, it's, it's not really the rise, it's what, we're, what the reason for the rise is. Mm. Um, and, and, and I concur with what other people say, it's the, the, the actual amount has to be taken into account, not necessarily the percentage. Our council tax mainly goes to Bath and North East Somerset Council. Um, but on that basis, um, I think I've said this before, that, that I'm always wary of saddling the next, um, the next council with decisions that they can't undo. So um, I, I'm sorry to say, I think that the decision on the assistant apprentice, assistant warden, sorry, should be, should be moved to the next, um, the next council who will sit and if they have to make a final decision on that in a year, I think that's a shame. But I think it's wrong of us to commit them to that kind of level of expenditure right now, three months before the, the council ends. Um, I think we should keep the amount for the 
communications because we used to put fourteen thousand pounds into Midsummer Northern Life. Now we've not got that. The original idea was we were going to find ways to advertise and um, council business in other print media. We've not done that at all. I think we should be looking for ways to support other print media um, and, and other forms of advertising. Um, and we've still reduced that budget from 14,000 to 4,000, so it's still a huge reduction. So that is why we go, <coughs> go with those options. Mm. Richard, yeah. um, the, uh, the budget is uh, affected by our need now to support youth uh, to a much higher value than we have, uh, have done in the past something over 30,000 pounds. <coughs> as far as the uh, assistant warden is concerned, uh, we're making provision for those funds so that if we, when the new council forms, it has that decision that it can use. Otherwise, uh, the uh, assistant warden um, d d d debate would go into January 2024 mm. um, and I'm mindful of the burden of work that our present warden is having to carry and the need for him to have the necessary support. Um, I'm quite happy with the 4,000 increase for communications. And when I look at this and I see that the increase per household of the first option, which is the assistant warden and communications, is 32 pence per week. That seems <coughs> to become quite insignificant against the backdrop of what we are what we need to do. We need to have adequate provision for an assistant warden, even if it's a contractor of some sort. Uh, <clears throat> um, otherwise, how's the work going to get done? So we have to have the money there to spend it if it comes up. We can't wait another year. Um, it's not supporting our present warden. Yeah, put it that way, I can try to see where you're coming from, yeah. Mm. So if we didn't appoint the assistant one free joint grass off, the money allocated, what would happen to that? Just go back into the slush fund, is it? Mm. Into the reserves. Into the yeah. Yeah. Meanwhile, it's uh, cost of the precept is being levied on, on the plan. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. Uh, it's unfortunate I couldn't come to the budget meeting we had um, the other week. Um, but I was pleased to see that the um, community events and things had been added back in. That was, mm. that was really good and I thought it was a very positive move. Um, I noticed that the amount allocated to youth had gone up from our earlier budget. And that, that is a quite a significant increase on what we've and, um, allocated for youth in previous years, <coughs> yeah. and I think you know that is a result of Thane's um, not exactly. doing things they used to do and mm -hmm. moving the, the work to us. Um, and I think it needs to be highlighted that you know that is something uh, additional that we didn't used to need to do, but we do need to do something. So uh, we'll have to find fun we have to pass those funds. Uh, those costs on to our residents, unfortunately. That's Changed by 15,000, wasn't it? Yeah. 15,000, which was originally 11.8. Yeah, mm. good point. Four years ago, yeah. Um, mm. The assistant ward thing, I too having sort of, um, I'm reluctant to go ahead with the increase for the assistant ward at the minute. Um, because of the burden that we're taking, but I do appreciate, you know, if you look at a weekly figure, there isn't a huge amount of difference between um, adding in the warden costs, even if you don't necessarily spend them, um, and not doing it. There's only 
about uh, seven p a week. So um, it's not a huge difference, but um, I'm reluctant to go go further with the wall. Right. So yes. Uh, when talking about the assistant warden or, or the funds for the assistant warden, uh, we have to throw into the mix the fact that we have already had some sort of discussion about providing a van for the present for the warden um, and possibly spending £10,000 in that way. Um, and we haven't got a budget for it. So, could we change the uh, nomenclature of that provision for the assistant warden to provision for warden service advancement, warden support? We would then have some funds that we could buy a van with, and tax, and insure it, and maybe a few quid over. Mm -hmm. If uh, when Dave um, and it was overwhelmed, and we can pay a handyman or some sort of such person out of that fund to give him a lift. I'm so sorry, it seems a, a, a bit confusing <coughs> that issue a little bit, really, um, to use the money for two different things or to, you know, we, we either need more labour time, which I, I agree we probably do, but I don't think we could, at the moment with the finances away, that are justified that amount. I would, would have assumed that the, would have thought that the, the uh, that commitment to the, the lease in the van is already budgeted or somewhere in the, it's in the, in the budget. Yeah, it's budget. budget. Yeah, and, and so, you know, we don't need to have contingency for that, so. And it's the amount for the warden was actually already in the budget, so you're talking about taking it out of the budget. It was already there. But we did a lot of movement, yeah. taking mm. out, putting in, mm. taking out, putting in, so it's just one of the aspects. And no matter which way you do it, whether or not you take it out and then say you're going to get a contract in, because obviously, you know, the town warden is entitled to annual leave, and if he wants to go away for two weeks, who's going to empty the bins? So you'd still have to pay a contractor to do it if you didn't employ somebody. So where's your allocation to get your contractors in to do these to do these works? Yeah. So some way, shape, or form, you're going to have to pay for it somehow, whether it be as an employer, is as a contractor, as an ad hoc. There needs to be something in provision for it. Pete, didn't we have that contingency already? If Dave was the only employee anyway. Mm. No. So we now covered that anyway. Beginning. That's why, yeah, that's no, why yeah. we can't. We have managed, haven't we? It's like it is managed to make the 2023 and the park are beautiful and the common grounds are really well taken over and I hope they have had some holidays up until now. So somehow we have managed. We you have, managed. but on the other hand, at West Clues, when Dave's away, you can tell Dave's away because the place is a, a, an awful mess. <laughs> it, it's a health risk because of all the stuff that's been thrown around and not collected, broken bottles, things like that. So it, and it's the it's only time support. we get complaints is when Dave is away, the yeah. stuff isn't being done, and it's even got to the point where office staff have gone down and empty bins, okay. and I'm not sure that that's appropriate use of time for the officers yeah. to Well, it clearly out. sounds like we probably do need some contract yeah. cover for these short periods, because um, we certainly don't want to place going into disrepair and stuff, but then sometimes perhaps getting an entire new employee of sorts might be a sledgehammer for cracking that. So perhaps it's best to go forward at the moment uh, without the apprentice and see if we can manage by getting adequate contract cover for holidays and emergencies. And um, the next council can monitor the situation and if the feedback from the public is we're not doing a good enough <coughs> job, they can decide to devote more resources to it. Mm. I think um, so, Martin was saying it disagrees. I, I do agree with what Richard's saying. I think if we say ward, we change it from the assistant ward to warden support, to be honest, that, that, that makes more sense because be, that money can be the same money, but it can use, be used in any way we want, whether or not it be a vehicle or whether or not it be um, getting in, buying in help. Yeah. So well, I think warden support is a better description of that money than it is. Yeah, definitely. So does it 
Are you suggesting? Well, I'm suggesting you use the, the, the same. You, they've just changed the heading of it as warden of support. Can we do that, Donna? Then you're not landing with the next. You're not, you're not saying you're going to take on an assistant. You're saying, look, if we want something, we want to hire in somebody to, to do something because Dave's away sick or whatever, we can do it. Or if we need a vehicle because Dave's away and the vehicle's or it's off the road, we need to hire in another vehicle. Yeah. We can do it. It's more to support. Yeah, yeah. Right, 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 right. But it isn't solving the, the need. No, it's the same amount of there. money. It is. <coughs> But the, the money that the need was had yeah. to be yeah, we, more we, regular yeah. man, man <clears throat> labor time. So it's, it's yeah. But you need to have a budget for it. You just can't get out of the air, can you? Mm. So, uh, we need a proposal of something for a start. Yes, I propose number three, precinct with our new name and communications. Right, okay, so um, can we have a show of hands for that? Which one is that? Can we, can we, yeah, sorry, we just say you've got this on the agenda. On the agenda, it says to consider your budget your recommendations from the finance working group. There is nowhere on the agenda does it say to agree your preset. You advertise your preset and budget meeting for February, which is on the website. Mm -hmm. Is it now a good idea? You've had these discussions, leave your budget on the website for people to. If anybody's got any comment to make on it, it can come back in and you make your final yeah. decision in the February meeting where it was planned to do yeah. so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And that gives you, if you're allowing scrutiny then for people to, okay. you might have somebody come up and say something yeah. completely different or. Yeah. Okay, no. But the wording will be changed on the yeah. website. From yeah. assistant warden to warden support. Yeah. And okay. people, people should be made aware of where the increases are coming from, because some of the increases are coming from things that Baines didn't <coughs> used to used to um, finance, mm -hmm. and they're not doing it anymore. Like youth and street lights, Christmas street lighting is another one. The most recent, the football pitch up at uh, yeah. Five City. Mm -hmm. But we're not paying for that. It's no, I know. We're really paying for that. Yeah. 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 yeah, but Christmas lights and things like that. Yeah. What you can set Right then, so we're yeah. all happy with that. Okay. Right, well, that's the end of the open meeting. So, um, thank you everybody for coming.